you very much. I didn't notice my watch was a little slow, and that one's a little fast, so uh, now we're synced, but uh, glad that you could be here. I want to thank God first for the opportunity that we have to be here today, that we have a place, a home of peace and prosperity. Uh, he's given us an opportunity to freely assemble together, and I want to thank you all for coming today, uh, this evening, to enjoy this little concert that we have, and uh, if you are um, able to maybe message somebody in your family and say, hey, turn on your computer and look and watch, uh, you can do that as well because we are trying to live stream this. It won't be as good as being here in person, that's for sure, but uh, we'll, we'll try that. And um, I want to thank the Gospel Heralds for being here. Thank you so much. We know uh, some of them or some, we kind of know some of them directly and some through like second or third order connections that we have and uh, it's a real blessing. So um, we are glad that we're able to be together. Let me just have a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we can have to uh, be here and to enjoy uh, some music, some testimony, uh, some encouragement, and some information about Appalachian Bible College. God bless these ones that will minister to us tonight and us as we listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. When all was dark and endless night, there was no energy or light. The universe was conceived. And stars were set in place, and then the sun began to blaze when God breathed. God breathed. God breathed. In the beginning, God breathed. God breathed. And all creation came to. God bless the earth abundantly. God bless the earth abundantly. With living things to swim the sea. With living things to swim the sea. And set all creatures running free. Running free. When God breathed. When God breathed. When God breathed. God breathed. The joyful music that they bring, all the music was conceived when God breathed. God breathed into the human form, and when humanity was born, God said the human spirit free. When God breathed, God breathed, God breathed, in the beginning God breathed, God breathed, and all creation came to be, God breathed. When Nothingness and night. God breathed, and there was
Good evening. We are the 2023 Gospel Heralds team from Appalachian Bible College. Through our program tonight, Testifying the Gospel, we want to share with you the wonderful words of life. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dog addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is, Your name is life. life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Your name is life, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power. in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. One aspect of testifying the gospel is praising God for his work of grace in our lives. Tonight, we would like to give you the opportunity to testify of the gospel by joining us on our next song, Amazing Grace. You'll find the words and hymn number 130 in your hymnals. Please join us on stanzas one, two, and five. Please stand and sing on the final stanza. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear.
Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will here on earth. While I've been at ABC, I've had the opportunity to serve in a variety of ways, both on campus and in my local church. And now this fall, I get the opportunity to serve in a brand new way as a preschool teacher. While I am excited about this new stage in my life, I'm also a bit nervous too. I don't have a ton of experience teaching preschoolers, and this will be my first time living on my own. Sometimes thinking about all the changes that are coming can be pretty scary, but I take comfort in knowing that God is in control and he will be with me and give me everything I need for this new stage in my life. Although my weaknesses are great, effective ministry doesn't come from confidence in my own abilities, but confidence in my God who loves me and gives me everything I need to do exactly what he calls me to do. I'm excited to see how God will grow me and enable me to testify the gospel to the students that I teach. And I know that wherever God leads me, I can always trust him. When shade, green, high. 
postures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. No sorrows be and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. Some through the Spirit within me to rest 
Well, we just wanted to um, uh, <clears throat> take a moment um, partway through our program here to just say thank you so much um, for, for having us out tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, we're so glad to be here. Um, and we did want to let you know about some opportunities that we have at ABC um, for you all. Um, and I truly believe there's a way for all of you to get involved um, in what the Lord is doing uh, at ABC. Um, so, uh, what are we? Well, we have, we have two parts. We have a college and we have a camp. Um, so I'm going to start off talking about the, the college and then I'll, I'll end talking about the, the camp and uh, some opportunities there. So, um, what does the college have to offer? Well, um, we have um, anywhere from a, a four-year program um, to a, a two-year program or even a one-year Bible certificate. We also have some dual enrollment courses while you're in uh, high school. Um, so we have a, a whole lot to offer in terms of um, education in that way. Um, now something that sets ABC apart from a lot of different colleges um, is our stance on the Bible. Um, we truly believe um, that it is the, the foundation that we need um, to, to know how to, how to live in this life. And so how we work is a little bit different. Um, everyone who comes to ABC will major in Bible. Um, especially speaking of, um, you know, our, our four-year programs. We do have four-year programs. Um, so how that works is your first and primary major is, um, again, in Bible. So you can also, you, you choose your secondary major. Um, so, for example, you can major in biblical counseling. You can major in missions, which has all sorts of different, um, a, a lot of these have different concentrations that you can get. For example, in missions, you could be a missions TESOL, which is teaching English to speakers of other languages. Um, and there's um, the youth and family, just 
various things like that, um, as well as a camping uh, major, which is pretty unique. Um, there's not many colleges out there offering it. Um, and uh, we're, I think we're pretty unique even amongst those colleges in that we have a lot of experiential um, base learning um, in, in uh, our camping major. So you actually go out and you, you learn how to tie knots and you learn how to run a camp. You learn how to do these um, activities with, the, um, uh, with, with your campers to, um, you know, further their, um, their growth in Christ. So anyway, um, we, have, we have camping, uh, music. There's a lot of these guys who are in the music major as you'll hear in a, a couple moments. Um, we have pastoral as well as elementary education and uh, interdisciplinary major. So interdisciplinary is kind of, um, you pick different things from uh, different majors that you would like to, to be in. So when you hear about them talking about their majors in a moment, um, they're talking about their second major. Um, and so again, everyone majors in Bible, so you're gonna get lots of Bible classes and a good foundation. And we really do encourage everyone to at least consider a year of Bible college. We believe that it is a very, um, it is a vital foundation um, or it is a, a huge help um, in your life, even if you're planning on going on to um, some, some other, um, uh, you know, I don't know, a computer science major or, or what have you. So um, now our motto at ABC is uh, because life is for service. And we truly believe that the only reason um, that we are alive after we're saved is to serve Christ and to share um, the gospel with others, and so that is our that is our motto. And um, something that is um, pretty awesome this year um, that I'm able to share with you um, it, that comes from uh, our heart of service and comes from um, what I was talking about before of um, wanting everyone to um, at least consider a year of Bible. Um, now, if you zone me out a little bit, I get it, but you want to pay attention for this. This is really big. Um, we have this thing called BIG, <laughs> the BIG Scholarship, um, and this is brand new this year, and Lord willing, um, is, you know, as long as he sustains, we, we want to continue this into the future. This is not just for this year, so um, this applies to any of you who may consider it. What this is, is a 100% tuition scholarship. That's for everyone who comes their first year at ABC, even if you transfer in, your first year at ABC for full-time residential students. And there's really, I mean, uh, there's no strings attached to this. And this, this comes out of our heart for wanting young people to, to grow up in the Lord and to have a good foundation for life. Um, and so um, this is just a way that the Lord has provided so that we could bring more students in um, to learn his word um, before they go out. Um, and do whatever, and uh, I believe that this will be a, a, a great aid to those who may not be able to um, do this otherwise. So this is really big. Grab one of these cards if you got um, a friend or someone. Again, this is new this year, 100% um, of your tuition. On top of that, you can also get other scholarships that will cover your room and board as well. So for most students, what that means is free. You get to come to college your first year for free, so that is huge. We highly encourage everyone to come and take advantage of that. Um, one thing I did fail to mention before is we do have sports, so we have um, just very di various different sports. We have um, soccer and volleyball and basketball, and so if you're interested in sports, we do offer some sports. And um, we are fully accredited as well, so all your credits will transfer back and forth and all that, all that good stuff. So um, <clears throat> now if you are interested or know someone who's interested, we have these cards in the back. Um, you can just write your name on it or whoever you think might be interested, and uh, you can fill out if you have a couple different interests, specific interests, you can put that on there or not. It's up to you. Um, and we'll just, we'll shoot you an email and say, hey, what questions can we answer for you? We'd love to just connect and uh, help you out in any way that we can. So I encourage you to fill those out. Um, and then the other card that we have back there, it looks similar, is the President's Prayer Partner. So what this is, if you sign up for the emails, you'll get a weekly update of what, things that are going on at the college ways that you can pray for us, groups that might be coming in, or um, you know, just different things happening around campus. Um, so that's a great way that you can pray. There's also a monthly update if you prefer snail mail. So that's a great way that you can get involved. Um, we believe that prayer is vital and very important, and we, we covet your prayers um, and encourage you to um, take advantage of that. Now, finally, onto the camp. Um, so Alpine has two branches, I guess you might say. We have a residential camp that runs throughout the summer, and then we also have adventure programs that runs all year long, all year long. Um, so 
Um, the camp, we have anywhere from the little ones up through the teenagers. Um, we have day camp and overnight camp. Um, it's a little, I know it's a little far, but um, you might be able to do <laughs> overnight if you're interested or know someone who's in the area. Um, now the adventures, we have people come from all over the world um, because we have some of the best whitewater rafting, period. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's truly amazing. White knuckle, I mean, you, you think you're going to die, but you're not. <laughs> so um, we, have, we have whitewater rafting, um, rock climbing, rappelling, caving. Um, I'm sure there's many that aren't coming to mind at the moment, but there's, there's many opportunities there for you to come down with a group, and everything incorporates God's word. Um, and so their, their motto is, um, I'm saying this on the fly here, but it's something about linking biblical truths to experiences, basically. I'm, I'm saying this on the fly. I should have looked at it before I, before I said that. But basically the idea is you, you, have, you have an experience and then you link it to a biblical truth so that it has a lasting impact on your mind. And so um, it's a wonderful, wonderful ministry um, for you to take advantage of. Um, and with that, um, we're about ready to hand it back over to the Herald. But first, Pastor, I have a knock-knock joke for you, just for you. Ready? Okay. Knock-knock. Who's there? Tank. Tank who for having us tonight? <laughs> well, you know, I love knock-knock jokes, too. In fact, I got one for y'all tonight. Knock-knock. Who's there? Woo. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. After four fantastic years and four older siblings, I finally graduated from the missions program at ABC. My name is Seth. Wait, wait, wait. I got one, too. All right, let's hear it. Knock-knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo-hoo? Boo-hoo. I had to spend all of tour with my two older sisters. Oh, right there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, just kidding. Just kidding. I love them. Hey, guys, I'm Jonathan, and I just finished my freshman year in the missions major. I can't believe you'd say that about me after all the mm -hmm. toys I shared with you and all the funny jokes. Mm -hmm. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who? Who, who? Yes, you sound just like my favorite animal, the owl. I love them because they're wise, and I'll need wisdom to testify the gospel to my future students as an elementary education major. I'm Claire. Do you want to hear a joke? Oh, yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Do you need some advice on how to tell a knock, knock joke? Oh, yeah. As a biblical counseling major, I've been learning how to help people. You never know. Someday, they just might call me Dr. Macy. All right, well, let me try again. Knock, knock. Who's there? Needle. Needle who? Need a little help learning your lines? I could help you learn your lines because I was on the drama team. My name's Jamie, and I'm from Argentina. Hey, listen to this one. Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Donut. Donut, Donut who? who? Donut, you know, we music majors make up about half the team. My name's Hannah, and as a graduate from the music program, I hope to use music as a tool to testify the gospel to people that have never heard God's word. Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Little old lady. Little old lady who? Wow, I didn't know you guys could yodel. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't yodel. I can't teach you piano. My name is Angela, and I just graduated from the piano pedagogy major. You guys, I finally thought of a very good knock-knock joke. Are you ready for this? Knock, sure. knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Ooh. cow. Oh. Like the cow interrupted, you guys. Keep working on it. Well, I'm not very good at writing knock-knock jokes, but as a student at ABC in the music major with a focus in composition, hopefully one day I'll testify the gospel by writing music on the mission field. My name's Katie. And we're about ready to start our next song. Oh, wait, I'm over here. Yep. 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 Do you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Who's there? Wafer. Wafer who? Wait for me. Don't you know the conductor's supposed to go first? Oh, I'm sorry. This guy's overlooked you there. He wouldn't say that if he were my height. <laughs> my name's Caleb, and I graduated from the conducting major at ABC. This summer, I have the privilege of serving as the Gospel Herald student leader. As we travel on Gospel Heralds this summer testifying the gospel, we do a lot of knocking on doors. So I told all these guys to grab some wooden instruments so that they can get their practice in during this next song. So guys, we'll just stay together and it'll be super fun. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. yep. Kind of sound like knocking yeah. yeah. on a door? No. That's just obnoxious. Too much? Yeah. No. Okay, let me try one more time. All right. Yeah. So 
Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, could it be my lord? Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, could it be my lord? Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Answer, children, be restored. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, let it be my lord. Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody singing loud and strong. Somebody singing, singing loud and strong. Listen, can you hear the song? Oh, children, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's somebody singing, singing loud and strong. Somebody singing, somebody singing, can you hear the song? Somebody singing, somebody singing come and be restored. I know that somebody singing, praise the Lord. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. Somebody's, somebody's knocking, can it be my Lord? Somebody's, somebody's, somebody's knocking, knocking at your door. I know that somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Overcome with sorrow? Too timid and afraid? Too frail or ill? Feel unworthy or despised? Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. Praise to the Lord of the small broken things. Who sees the poor sparrow that cannot take wing? Who loves the lame child and the wretch in the street? Who comforts their sorrows and washes their feet? Praise, praise to, to the Lord of the, the faint and afraid, who girds them with courage and lands them his age. He pours out his spirit on vessels so weak that the timid can serve and the silent can speak. Praise to the Lord of the frail and the ill, who heals their afflictions, or carries them till they leave this tired frame and to paradise fly to never be sick and never to die never die praise him given so much and can so little give. Our frail is being praised. God will never despise. He sees his dear children through mercy filled. 
The voice of a child, a tender gift of love, their innocence confirming their song to God above. Oh, to have a childlike faith that sees a light brand new. Lord, give me a simple heart to let your light shine through. Let the little children come to kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. God loves his family, he looks at them and smiles, seeing their faithful love through the eyes of a child.
turned my eyes upon Jesus was one night during family devotions. I don't remember what my dad was reading, but I remember thinking that if I were to die that day, I would not be with God. I quickly then asked my dad how I can be saved. He then explained the gospel to me and how I must know that I'm a sinner and how Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins and how I must repent and continue to seek him. And it wasn't until many years later that I realized that salvation was not just a one-time event, but an ongoing relationship with God. And now, each day, I quickly and I strive to get to know God each day, and I strive to get to know God better, better as I seek to walk more closely to Him. Thank you. 
feet wide. That gold is so shiny, it hurts my eyes. Playing for the dedication of the king's statue is such an honor. The opportunity of a lifetime. I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Guys, look at the size of this audience. Everyone's here. All the princes, governors, when, judges. <laughs> when the king commands you to come, you come. I can hardly wait for them to hear us play. It will be something they will never forget. We practiced so hard, we're sure to get a standing ovation. <laughs> it had better be the complete opposite. What do you mean? Well, the king has commanded that when we play, everyone is supposed to fall flat on the ground. But that's going to make a huge sound and cover up my playing. FYI, anyone who refuses will immediately be thrown into a flaming furnace. That's our cue. Play, play. <laughs> The band's playing. Stand up or fall down. Those are the options. Everyone else is doing it. Would it really be so wrong to, just this once? The king has done so much for us. He appointed us to be charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon. What would it hurt to honor him in this way? We could pretend to be weak from the sun and just pretend to faint. Guys, we are sticking out like a sore thumb. Who in this crowd would really care if we just go ahead and bow? Good chance to lose our jobs if we mm. don't. <laughs> this will definitely destroy our reputations. Guys, let's think about the real consequences. Death. Mm -hmm. Right now, our actions will speak louder than our words. We will be testifying to everyone what we believe. Why do you think they didn't fall down and worship the statue? I am certain they just didn't hear us. They're men of great position. I know they would have fallen down if they'd heard us. Probably someone was talking to them. I hate it when people talk when I play. Well, maybe they just didn't understand what they were to do. Uh, let's help them out. One final chance, now that they see what everyone else is doing. A little louder this time? I'm not sure that guy over there is going to be very happy having to drop down again. He just got up from the last time we played. <laughs> Nope, but the Chaldeans did. They hate Jews. Does someone know who the three were that didn't bow? Everyone knows who they are. They're the three men in charge of the whole province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Appointed by the king himself. They were trusted to do anything the king needed. Real stand-up guys. That's the problem. They're not supposed to be stand-up guys now. So simple. We play, you fall down. We're in trouble. The Chaldeans are headed straight to the king. C can you hear what they're saying? They're telling the king that we're not paying any attention to any of his orders. The king knows that we have always faithfully obeyed his commands. And that we do not serve any of the king's gods. We have no choice. God was clear when he said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. It is God who sees us. God has taken care of us and blessed us. We cannot bow down to the king's statue. Doesn't look good for those three men. Those Chaldeans are reminding the king about the rule. What rule? The rule the king made about what happens to everyone who doesn't fall down and worship the statue. Not the one about being cast into a burning, fiery furnace! That's the one. Uh, well, that bit of news did not make the king happy. Boy, is he mad now. The king just ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him immediately. Now he's breaking the bad news to them about what's about to happen. What's the king saying? He's saying, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. He's also asking the question we all want to know. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? This is hopeless. I want to hear what they're saying to the king. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, 
Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What's happening? Oh, no. The king just ordered that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. And that the mighty men of his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Fully clothed. Their cloaks, tunics, hats, everything. <gasps> Did you see what just happened? The fire burned up the mighty men who threw them in. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are toast. What's happening? <gasps> I can't look. Uh, What's the king doing now? I hope he doesn't get too close to that fire or his son is going to need to start posing for a new statue. I can't see what the king's doing, but you're not going to believe what he's saying. You can read his lips from this far away? I can't look. Just tell me. He's saying he sees four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They're not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now the king's giving another command. Who's he throwing in now? I can't look. He's saying words I never thought I'd hear coming out of his mouth. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Well, you'd better plug your nose, because if and when those men come out, they're going to smell like burnt chicken. I can't look. I can't say either. All the princes and governors ran over and are blocking my view. Just listen. Everyone's saying the fire had no power on the bodies of the men. Open your eyes. You are not going to believe what just happened. Not a hair of their head was singed. Their clothes are not burnt. Unplug your nose. Not even the smell of fire was on them. Amazing. How could they endure such things? Why would they endure such things? But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dearer to myself, so that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I perceive of the Lord Jesus to, to testify the gospel of, of the, the grace of God. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence? That our souls to him belong Who holds our days within his hand What comes apart from his command And what will keep us to the end The love of Christ in which we stand What truth can calm the troubled soul God is good, God is good, where is his grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise? Who stands above the stormy trial? Who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore? The rock of Christ! Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess, Christ our hope in life and death. Christ is our hope. What will we sing? Christ he lives, Christ he lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him, there we will rise to meet the Lord. Then sin and death will be destroyed, and we will feast in endless joy when Christ is ours forevermore.
Well, uh, I sense, or I, I, I pray that you all are able to sense our heart um, this evening, um, our heart for the gospel, for, for sharing this good news um, with others, and uh, <clears throat> that's what a lot of these, these songs have focused on, and um, I want to bring your attention to uh, a well-known account in the Bible um, from John chapter 4, um, where uh, Jesus talks to the woman at the well. Um, many of us know this story. Um, there's this woman, um, we believe, of low reputation um, who, who comes to draw water uh, in the heat of the day, um, likely because she's embarrassed um, about her position um, in the social rankings. Um, we see later on in the passage, um, she's a, a woman of many men, um, and uh, unfortunately, and and. But Jesus uses this opportunity. Um, he would have it that he would meet with this woman on this day and confront her. Um, and he uses this, this wonderful analogy, this, this beautiful picture that was so clear to her. He comes up to her and uh, he says, you know, he, he asks her um, first for, you know, a drink for himself, but then he he, he says to her, um, you know, anyone who drinks of this water, speaking of the water in the well, will thirst again. But he who drinks of the water that I have will never be thirsty again. And of course, we're talking about two different kinds of water here. I think we, we realize that, right? We're talking about the physical water from the well. Um, and of course, you know, while we're here, um, you know, on earth and in, in, in our bodies, we must partake of that water, certainly. Um, but you know what, after we, after we take that drink of water, guess what happens tomorrow when we're out in the heat of the sun and we're working? We need more, right? We're never satisfied with that water. There's so many things out there right now um, in this world that we can try and satisfy ourselves with. There are, um, you know, things that people turn to. Um, they're, they're just, they're hopeless without Christ and they don't know what to turn to. They turn to things like, like drugs and they think that's going to fulfill um, fulfill them. They turn to things like power. They think that their position will fulfill them. And they, they drink from that well and they say, this will satisfy. But guess what? Tomorrow they're going to be reaching for another position because that didn't satisfy. We reach for, for money, for, for, for money, for status. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things that we can chase in life that are ultimately empty. But I'm here to tell you tonight that there is somewhere, there is someone who we can get eternal water from. Water that satisfies to the deepest parts of our soul. That when we drink of it, that we will never thirst again. When they were singing about Christ, our hope in life and death, people in the world, they can't sing about that. Where is their hope in death? To them, death is death and you're, you're dead and gone. But to us, because we've partaken of that eternal water, we can be excited about death. Amen? Because we're going to heaven, <laughs> right? This, this, this dingy place that we live in called earth is temporary. And, and they're going to come back here in a moment, and they're going to sing about, about wa this water, this eternal water. And I urge you, I beg you to come. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, come and experience. Let us talk to you. Um, talk to the pastor. Talk to talk to one of us on the team. Um, let us tell you about this eternal water and how you can be satisfied and and find this water for your soul. And for those of you who are saved, I urge you: this is an amazing gift that Christ has given us. This is not to be kept to ourselves. We need to take the opportunity, just as Christ took the opportunity that day with the woman at the well, and we need to share about this eternal water. So um, with that, I will turn it back over to the team.
to the prince. All who are covered by dust from the day, Jesus is waiting to wash it away. Come be refreshed as you learn to obey. Come to the waters of grace. Come to the waters of grace. All who are hurting in mind and in soul, come to the waters of grace. Those who are injured who long to be whole, come to the waters of grace. All who have stumbled and fallen away, those who have wandered like sheep gone astray, come be refreshed as you learn to obey. Come to the waters of grace. Come to the waters of Come to the waters, sparkling with love, wash in the fountains that flow from above. Come to the waters, come take your place, come to the waters of grace, come to the waters of grace, come to the fountains evermore. Come to the waters of grace. Jesus is waiting to heal and restore. Come to the waters of grace. Vessels of earth are you shattered today. Jesus the potter won't cast you away. Love can redeem and repair broken clay. Come to the waters of grace. Come to the waters of grace. Come to the waters of grace. Don't you have any more? <laughs> We'd like to hear more. <laughs> I know you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I've been greatly blessed. I think, uh, as I said to uh, our church in an announcement, I think yesterday or the day before, this has been an excellent way for us to redeem this time that we have uh, been together tonight. Uh, we talked about redeeming the time last night, didn't we, our young people? remember very well at our table we talked about that and uh, you know the moments can just kind of pass in, in no nothingness or they can be used for evil the days are evil the Apostle Paul said so we're thus to redeem the time and make uh, every opportunity that kind of improve it the best way we can and I can't think of a whole lot of better ways to improve uh, an hour and 24 minutes than what we've spent together tonight doing. Uh, before I forget, I want to pass uh, on behalf of Gospel Mission of South America and my capacity as the U.S. Board Chairman, greetings from General Director Tom Gibbons and his wife Debbie to you all. I think you all know them. 
Yes, good. I sent a message to our WhatsApp group for GMSA just a little while ago and uh, sent a picture of you all and uh, said there are some folks here that you know and uh, they were, uh, a lot of folks were very pleased in the Mission family to see that. So I just commend that greeting to you and uh, bring blessings from South America and from South Florida uh, as well. I was thinking about uh, a lot of different things as you were singing and testifying tonight and just grateful for the, the message about the waters of grace, the waters of life, the, the waters that just for us as believers, we can give them and give them and give them to others and they never run out, do they? It's like the widow's oil, only it's the Lord's grace that's poured out in that water. And for those of us that don't know the Lord yet, um, you think about the thirst that you have to know the answer to the question, how can I be right with God? How can I, how can I have my sins washed away? Well, there's only, one, there's only one quantity, there's only one thing in life that will wash away your sins. And we could call that the water of grace, we could call it the blood of Christ, uh, we could call it the mercy of God. Uh, whatever you want to call it, it, it's that which Jesus Christ did in dying for our sins on the cross and uh, giving himself in our place. And he offered that water to that uh, woman of, of low repute and said, if you drink it, you will never thirst. You will never ever have a desire then to find something else beyond. Um, you know, when you come to Jesus, you never think, boy, I wish that there were something else, some more thing that I could have. You recognize in him is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him is life itself. He is the author and finisher of our faith. There's nowhere else you can go to find more or to, be, uh, to find a better answer to that question, where can I have my sins washed away? And so we commend that to you tonight, the waters of grace, the eternal waters, the ever-flowing stream. Uh, take of that and drink, and you will find that it uh, is satisfying. Well, join me in prayer as we close tonight. Father, we are grateful to you and only wish that we could hear more of your wondrous grace uh, in song, but for now we must wrap up and close our time. We pray that you'll take us from here safely to our homes with happy thoughts, with joyful thoughts, with thoughts full of Christ, with thoughts that are satisfied because we know the way that you were satisfied by the work of Christ to save us from our sins and to give us a home in heaven. More than that, to help us to live now righteously and in Christ for your name's sake. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that name which is above all names, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed, but I hope that as you go, you will greet these folks that you see along the sides of the auditorium and uh, greet one another. Amen.